Welcome to the Pastor's Studio. This is a special Easter edition in which we are spending our time thinking about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we can best commemorate that. Uh, I have in the studio Pastor Chipita Sivale and uh, I'm Conrad Mbewe and we are here specifically to address that matter. Uh, Pastor Sivale, as you are aware, Christians refer to the day on which they think about Christ's death as Good Friday. How can you refer to the death of someone as a good thing and yet you call him your savior? Well, thank you very much. I think the, when we refer to Easter, particularly the death of Christ, and we refer to as Good Friday, I think we need to have the appreciation of what that really means. Now, of course, over the years in the Christian churches, this is slowly beginning to lose its significance and its importance because now Easter or Good Friday is attached to events. And that's why people obviously number are asking themselves, now that we are under a lockdown or are being advised to stay home, how can I celebrate Easter? For them, they are think, simply thinking, I have to go on the streets, lift palm trees or palm branches and walk, uh, walk the streets. Now, when we say Good Friday, find the death of Christ, what are we really saying? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, the Bible tells us, For our sake he made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, before we could appreciate what that verse is really saying, we need to ask ourselves the question, what's the background to this? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3 gives us that background. God creates a perfect world, puts a man in the garden, Adam and, and then creates a woman as well, Eve, puts them in the garden, gives them a law not to eat of the tree. One particular tree, they disobey Genesis 3, sin enters the world. And because of that, man is born a sinner. And everything man has tried, when you look at the historical accounts in the Old Testament, they still show that man cannot get himself back to God. He needs someone perfect, or he needs a savior uh, who will redeem man from the sin. And this is a brief background to First Corinthians, no, Second Corinthians 5.21. Now in there we are being taught, for our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin. Now who is that one who knew no sin? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He was born in this world, never committed sin, even when he was being accused of wrongdoing. No one found fault with him. And here the Apostle Paul is basically telling us that on the cross of Christ, there is a great exchange that is taking place. God the Father is making the Son, is making the Son who knew no sin to be seen. And then in the death of Christ, we are being made the righteousness of God. Now, why do we call it Good Friday? In the death of Christ, the world or man is being made the righteousness of God. Why? Because of the righteous acts of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So um, you, you mentioned the fact that uh, Easter is not about necessarily being out in the streets mm. and waving palm branches. Mm. How can individuals celebrate mm. um, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ during this lockdown period? Well, again, like I said, that's a good, that's a good question. The how is, when we go to the scriptures, we begin to, to see how we can uh, uh, celebrate that. For instance, I could take you to, just quickly, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, you actually see Paul from verse 3 all the way to verse 10 is actually telling us what God has done and how we can praise God for that. Now in verse 7, he says, In him we have redemption 
through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Verse 8, let me get up to verse 10. Which he lavished us upon, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Now, obviously there Paul is talking about, he's trying to give us some historical context to it, like a background to what God has done in Christ. Now, those of us who are believers, this is a time to begin to reflect on what God has done for us in Christ. In Ephesians 1, you continue to see the phrase in him, in him, or in Christ. Now, when you, re you think of what God has done in Christ, that you've been forgiven of your sins, and the wrath of God has been taken away from you, the immediate response is to praise this God. And as a family, this is a time to sit and thank God for salvation in Christ. And what we can do is... Let's gather as a family and pray to this God and sing songs of praise that this God has saved us in Christ. But also this is a time to think of those of our friends or relatives living in sin. And let's plead with this God who saved us from sin that his grace may also be extended to them. So it's not necessarily about marching the streets, but it is Realizing what Christ has done for us in our lives, forgiving us of our sins, and through the joy of that experience, we burst in praise as we see what Paul is telling us in Ephesians 1. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much for enlightening us uh, on that point. Uh, as we said, this is uh, Pastor Studio, and we've just had this brief segment in which we have concentrated on the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, which is particularly upheld um, around the period of Good Friday. Uh, but it's part of the march, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior. Uh, at Kabata Baptist Church, we have a number of ministries. And as you can see in the background, uh, this is the Campus Outreach Ministry of the church. And they've been very kind to lend us the use uh, of their office for which we are most grateful. So keep a date with us for the next pastor's studio. Thank you. <laughs>